the federal government of Nigeria. It is strictly a private sector driven project. Strictly private sector. Government is not putting up a cover. It's right here. The two letters. And I'm also giving you the formation of the local organizing committee. This annexure 20 is by the federal government of Nigeria. Is that where we can get the Yes, um, I'll send it to you. If you give me your, your information, I'll send it to you. But you know, this is this is the formation of the local organizing committee. John Eno has this. These are the two letters sent to him. So he has this. And you will see that there is no time I asked for one couple from government. And I told him government will make money. So all that stuff about uh, the asked for, he did not even know how much he said, 50 million upward. Hmm? Is that what we need for the fight? No. That's not what we need for the fight. So this is the formation of the local organizing committee for you to have to balance your story. And these are the two letters to him. Uh, and I would like you guys to, to do me a favor. You know, something that will make me very happy is that for you to ask him, did he get this letter? Mm -hmm. And he did get the formation of the LOC. You know, where did Bashali ask for one couple? And then, what is very, very important, what Mr. President must know, what every Nigerian must know is that he lied, that he has only seen me one time in his life. Because, like I said, we were together in Lagos. We flew together from Lagos to Abuja, and in Abuja again, we sat down and we discussed. But he said he's only seen me once. And this is a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And we are talking about the Renewed Hope Agenda. And John Eno has, has introduced something called Renewed Hopelessness. Yes, mm. And that is what he has introduced. So these are the letters to, to, to John Eno. You, okay, you share. The universe of 8 billion people, only three boxes can be in the Guinness World Record. Number one is Bash Ali. Mm. Eight, thank you. Number two, which is a distant second, is Evander Holyfield. I'm 10 years older than Evander Holyfield. And number three is Mike Tyson. I'm 12 years older than Mike Tyson. And this is New York Times. This is not a Nigerian paper. This number five is New York Times. You know, and try to compare us. It says, you know, what Evander Holyfield is trying to do in his country is childish towards Bashiru Ali, also known as Bash Ali, is trying to do in Nigeria in vain. Right here, this is New York Times, so this is not Nigerian people. This is it. So I, I just want you to have this, so you know that you, know, you, you are dealing with somebody who is worthy, but decide that benefit must come to his country, Nigeria. This is why I'm here. And like I said, I can always take my passport and leave, but I don't want to leave. I want to do great things in my own country, Nigeria, and we're going to do it together. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. This one, this one, in this is the last offer I got for 75 million euros to fight in Germany, Dubai, or Saudi Arabia. But I said no, I want to fight in my country, Nigeria. If you're interested in this, you can have this. Before we now go to address the minister's speech. So when, when you guys are ready, we we'll talk about this speech. Because this, this is a press statement by the Minister of Sports, John Eno, and the correction by the World Boxing Champion, Bashar Lee O.O.N. The press conference was on April 28, 2024, and it was corrected on May 22. 2024 at this press conference. Uh, the headline is Bashali and his serial blackmail. Guys, one, 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 please. Bashali and his serial blackmail must be confronted and defeated. He says, Thank you, gentlemen of the press, for responding to this invitation at such short notice. Then I say, John, between 48 hours and on a Sunday, you know, call for a meeting with the press. But in eight months, since August 24, 2023 to be exact, could not call 
for a meeting with the members of the Bashar Ali Boxing Project Local Organizing Committee unless he gets another one million US dollars. Then he goes on, he says, I am constrained to address you today to speak to the trending video and open petition to the president wherein Bashar Ali, a former, I corrected him, I said, I am a current world boxing champion. World boxing champion through caution and decency to the wind to allege that I demanded the sum of another one million from him in order to endorse his plan to stage what he calls, what he calls the oldest boxer fight in Nigeria. I said it is for the Guinness World Record as the oldest boxer. The fight for the Guinness World Record as the oldest boxer is already endorsed and the members of the Bashar Ali Boxing Project Local Organizing Committee have been inaugurated by the federal government of Nigeria. All you have to do is to call for a meeting with the members of the LOC so we can continue as directed by the federal government, but you refuse unless you get another one million USD. So it goes on and says, when Bashar Ali released his video, an open letter to the president with the sole aim to defame and destroy my reputation and integrity, some friends and associates advised that I totally ignore him and his blackmail gambit. They believe that by, this is not clear, but by, by responding, by responding to Bashar Ali and his real campaign of Kalme, I will validate and bring him to limelight. I told him, I said, I've been in the positive limelight since I was 10 years old as a wrestler and as the strongest schoolboy in the world while John was yet to be born. Then he goes to the next one. He says, after a deep reflection, I have come to the inevitable conclusion that to ignore him will be a profound mistake. My reason for this is twofold. First, the perception in the public domain is that those in the public service are either thieves or kleptomaniacs who mindlessly pillage our commonwealth. I said, is that not the truth? Are you not one of them? This assumption, no matter how widely held, is not true. Don't make me laugh. Despite our campaign as a, uh, despite our challenges as a nation, there are men and women who continue to serve our country with honesty, integrity, and patriotism. I am one of such. That's what he said. I said, John, you are not, so stop lying. If you were, you won't demand for another one million USD to do your job. So secondly, ignoring Bashar Lee and his tradition of deploying, his tradition of deploying blackmail and gutter tactics now will further embolden and enable him to continue in his usual trajectory even after I have served out my mandate as Minister of Sports without consequences. John, if saying no to corruption is called blackmail, then I am proud to be called Mr. Blackmail. Then he says, gentlemen of the press, you are aware that before I was appointed to the office of the Minister of Sports De Development, Bashali had sought to mindlessly impose the character and reputation of some of my predecessors in office. He's now talking about people that came before him without any shred of evidence. I said, John, since you have become a spokesman for your predecessors, you know, what evidence do you have and how much did you get from their loot? In my own case, he has exhumed and redeployed you know, this hydra-headed monster and gone overboard because past. I don't know what that means, but I said, don't make me laugh. As a minister, Mr. Spa have treated him and his wild allegation with kid gloves to simply walk away from this ballooning. For me, it's not an option. I say mention one minister and what happened. Bashar Ali's allegation that I demanded for another one million USD as if I had received a first trench of one million dollars from him or perhaps any of my predecessors had done so is a manufactured lie from the pit of hell. 
I said, you are now defending your predecessors because you got a share of the loot. At no point in time did I demand for any form of gratification from Bashali. The question to ask are this. One million dollars from where? I told him from another upfront from the pay-per-view television revenue. If Bashali had one million dollars, why has he not signed, why, why has he not staged his fight? I said, damn, you are the chairman of the local organizing committee and you don't know the cost to host the historic fight. His Sporos allegation suffers from fatal deformity and is based on the erroneous impression that government in Nigeria is a cash cow at the mercy of public servants to pillage at will. Say, John, the public servant, it is a shame that you don't know anything about, about the project where you are the chairman and above all, you are too arrogant to learn. Is the federal government not going to make money from this project? Is your ministry not going to make money from this project? Then I said, let me be clear. Bash Ali desperately wanted to meet me in my very early days as the Minister of Sports Development when I had hardly settled down the job. In the divorce of his desperate attempts, I decided to meet him against the advice of the staff of the ministry who were familiar with his character and antics. I said my character and antics is say no to corruption and your staff know it. Against the advice, I decided to meet him out of respect for his age and based on the open door policy with which I am with which I am currently you know leading the ministry. John, this is another big lie. Conscious of the advice you know, of some key staff of the ministry, I sought to insulate myself and the office from any blackmail that may emanate from this meeting by making sure that my team was present at the meeting. He presented the issue of his pet project and I told him to be patient. Mark that, he said, I told him to be patient. Be patient for eight months because I refuse your demand for another one million USD. While I get more briefing from the ministry, John, did you not send me a test to lie that you sent my file to the Boxing Federation? Did I not on several occasions tell you it was the wrong department? Did I not on several occasions tell you to do the right thing? Did you do the right thing? No, because you have one million dollars on your mind. All my life, the said meeting is the first and only time I ever met Bashali. You know, so this is something that you must remember. He said that was the only time, the first and only time I ever met with Bashali. I said, John, you are the biggest liar of all time. Did we not meet in Lagos? Did we on Monday, November 28, 2023, not fly peace? Flight 7124 to Abuja. Did we not also discuss the 1 million US bribe you know, at the airport? Did I not tell you to be patient that once the fight holds, that you will get in clean money more than the 1 million USD bribe that you are begging for? Confess, shame the devil, and ask Nigerians for forgiveness. This is the way it is done in developed countries. Says there were no follow ups. After the one-up meeting, and I did not introduce any of my aides to him. After the said meeting, I politely, I politely refused to meet with him to this day, in spite of his numerous requests and pressures. So you can see, this is a minister of sport who is the chairman of the local organizing committee, and he admits here that he avoids you know, the product that's going to bring money to the country because of $1 million. I just want you guys to take note. The, okay. To his desperation uh, and precious, is the certain meeting to be, to me will speak for his desperation. Your test messages have been made public for the world to know how incompetent you are are you not the chairman of the Bashali Boxing Project Local Organizing Committee? Did you not tell me to be patient? 
you ask me to be present for eight months, and after I say no to your another one million USD demand, you then you now lied to me that you were working on the story fight, and like you said, you politely refused to meet with me again because I say because I am a bad market. <laughs> Gentlemen of the press, as you know, Bashali's plan to stage his his boxing fight in Nigeria has a long history spanning almost two decades. I said you are correct, very correct. To achieve this personal aspiration, he has deployed all manner of strategies, including naked blackmail and underhand tactics in his desperate efforts to, to arm twist the federal government to spend upwards, upwards, he, he does not even know the amount, upwards of 50 million USD to stage this fight. John the liar, you don't even know the fight cause, and you are the chairman of the LOC. What a minister! Successive successive ministers of sports have rightly, you know, told him that his plan to stage this fight is not the responsibility of the government, but a business that should be executed by the private sector. Say, so John, you have shown Nigerians that you do not believe in the renewed hope agenda as introduced by President Tunumbu, and instead you have introduced your own renewed hopelessness agenda. You know very well that the federal government is not putting up a cover to host, to host this historic fight, but to midwife it through the Ministry of Sports. It is purely private sector driven, and you know it. In fact, on October 10, 2023, I again gave you another copy of the formation of the federal government of the Bashali Boxing Project, LOC. Show Nigerians the two copies of my letters to you dated August 24, 2023 and October 17, 2023, where I asked the federal government for a cover to host this historic fight, which till date you have refused to reply because I said no to your another one million USD demand. In concluding this statement, gentlemen of the press, I, am, I sincerely believe that in spite of our numerous challenges, our country still has a soul. Our humanity will be irretrievably destroyed the day we lose our soul. John, your soul is corrupt and full of lies, as I have here proven. Bashali's desperate and unprovoked withering attack on me is an attack on decency, honesty, and integrity. John, you are not decent, you are not honest, and above all, your integrity is zero. The move to clear my name has just started, and there will be no let up until I achieve this sacred mission. In addition to other remedies under the ampit of the law, I have instructed my lawyer to write Bash Ali demanding an immediate public retraction of his allegation and to render a public apology. He will have just one week to do this. The failure to do this on his part will leave me with no option than to approach the courts to clear my name and seek damages. And I say, John, this is the only country in the world that when you fight corruption in the private, instead of corruption hiding in shame, corruption will come out boldly and confidently to fight you in public. As for me, I will never give up on my dream to fight in Nigeria, and I will never give up on Nigeria. I love my country, Nigeria. John, try to put Nigeria first. Please, thanks. When you go to meet a minister, what do they ask you to drop? Tell me now, when you go to meet a minister, what do they ask you to drop? They to say, drop your phone. Not in all cases. Hmm? Not in all cases. Not in all cases. Okay. But, okay. but, but in most cases, when you go, they will say, drop your phone. Yes. Hmm? Number one. John Enn, you, you, you see, you have, listen, Ladies and gentlemen, one house, listen, yes, one house, ladies and one house. You see, you have deviated with what we are saying. A man says he has met me only once in his lifetime. 
and I've proven to you we have met severally, okay? And he says he did not ask me for money. But in eight months, eight months, he has not done what he's supposed to do. I mean, do you have to be a college graduate to understand he's talking nonsense? And he said he has never met me outside of that. And I'm telling you, we have met severally, just me and John Eno. So now, when we meet, and he wants to talk, I say, hold on, hold on. You Let me put up my phone. You got recording. Yeah. <laughs> so I can start recording. So, I mean, when you make allegations, you make allegations based on what is going on. You know, I mean, why? You know, and this was Monday, November 20th, 2023. I never told anybody. I kept it, but I, I kept thinking that we have discussed, he will do the right thing. And eight months, eight months he has not done it, and he's the chairman of the LOC. And he says he did not ask for money, okay? Why did you do what you're supposed to do? Number one. Number two, why did you lie that you met me only once? I mean, it's very simple now. He said he met me only once because now he will have alibi that he has his people with him, okay? But what about meeting outside of, outside of Abuja? Flying back to Abuja together, uh, and you say, "What proof do you have?" So I should have told him before you ask me for money. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get my phone. Start talking. Remind, remind. Follow, follow. 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 He paid his way, and I paid my way. And he was seated directly behind me. Mm, we were in business class. I paid my own hard-earned money. I need you taxpayers' money to fly with me. Our money. Our money. And remember that. Remember, sorry, sorry, remember that you can get it. You can see he was defending the people before him. That, you know, I said I did. You know, they got $2 million. Please, put this on here now. They got two million dollars in advance. Let me, let me tell you now. They got two million dollars in advance from the projected money from the pay-per-view because they said they would need money to put promotional structures in place. But I told them, I said, I'm not going to give anybody a cover bribe. And he said, well, you know, since... You know, we are expecting money from pay-per-view. Why don't you give us a small amount from the pay-per-view? So we agreed, went back and forth and agreed on $2 million. The $2 million was given in cash, $100 bill, $2 million was given before we did the last inauguration, which was on May 21st, 2019. $2 million was given, you know, to the presidency, and it was given to Abba Kiari. Two million dollars in cash was given. So now, listen now, so now, when he came in, they told him already that, you know, there's money in this. You know the directors, now. everybody works together. Oh God, there's money here. So this is what, you know, we're going to do. And that was why when Sunday Dari came in, after taking 13 million Naira, from my 28 million that the federal government was supposed to give me for infringing on my fundamental human rights, he now asks that the pay-per-view money should be shared 50-50. So yes, they have gotten $2 million already. And now John comes, John wants another $1 million. And I said, no, you will not get one couple. All right. Thank you. you know, um, that is a good question. You know, I have been promoting boxing since 1987. My first fight was promoted at Liberty Stadium. You know, after I just won the title, you know, I decided to come to Nigeria, you know, to do the fight here. I fought at Liberty Stadium. That was December 50, 1987. And since then, I've become the biggest promoter, you know, in boxing. And I not only do I promote boxing, I also promote wrestling. So I've done that throughout the years. You know, I've sponsored many of our athletes to go abroad. Those who are in boxing, those who are in wrestling, and those who are in other things like karate and judo, you know, swimming. You know, I've done that, you know, and music too, you know. So I've, I've always promoted, you know, the interest, you know, of Nigerians. Always, you know. I've been doing that, you know, since 1987, like I said. Thank you. 
and then yes and uh, you see most of the banks that we are working with you know they all regret that you know the federal government inaugurated them you know because we could have done this on our own without the federal government okay since the federal government inaugurated them and asked the ministry of sports to midwife the process for them you know it would be morally wrong and sinful for them to now start you know working outside do you understand what i'm saying outside of the people that brought them together so now all the minister has to do is to call for a meeting because they have been mandated to midwife the process are you listening yes, yeah you know so he has been mandated but he has refused to do that unless he gets another one million dollars and this is why i say he's not going to get one million dollars and this is why you know in, in my letter to mr president i put it there i said that he should set up a committee in the presidency you know to host this fight you know take it away from the ministry let the ministry not be involved because the ministry is not doing anything anyway but to midwife so let the presidency do it so we can go ahead and hold this fight in nigeria the problem right now is that since federal government brought the banks together okay. if any other bank comes in it will look like sabotage, sabotage okay. you know you, do you understand what i'm saying federal government has mandated a group of people to do it you see the, the, the problem in the traces of the world has never been the federal government because you know the federal government has inaugurated and you have copies you know the problem are the ministers who want to reap where they did not sow you know if the ministers do the right thing we will not have any problem at all That's true. you know and if i agree to cooperate with them and say let us steal nigeria's money and if everything you know will be done we will not be having this meeting but just figure let us have the let us do the right thing so like i said i want to be the president of nigeria when i retire from boxing i don't want anybody to say that basically stole money from me or basically shared you know dirty money from me you know i want it to be clean money when I come in to run, my record is clean. So can I can I ask a question? Uh, Why? You see, is, uh, when I came to Nigeria, you know, I made up my mind that I'm going to break the jinx that you cannot do business in Nigeria without giving bribe. That was the mentality I came with, and and I've not changed, despite going through hell, despite being broke, I've not changed. You know, when I was offered 75 million euros to come to Dubai, Germany, or Saudi Arabia, I said no. And I was broke. You know, and I'm still broke. But I did not go. Do you know why? Because if I go, what hope do I give you? You know, when you look at a bachelor, a national honor holder, a man who once had small money, was frustrated outside of Nigeria. And then you look at others who don't even have anything. You can imagine what happens to millions of Nigerians. We don't even have a mouthpiece. They frustrate them, they go, or you come back, you know, and you are at their mercy. They say, well, okay, this is what we give you. And because you are desperate, you say, okay, Oga, I will take it, and you keep going. I don't know if you have heard of somebody called Anthony Joshua. Have you heard of Anthony Joshua? Yeah. He, 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 the former heavyweight champion of the world. Okay, but I would you wondered in your quiet moment, why is he not fighting in Nigeria? Why does he leave his own country and go to Saudi Arabia to fight? Because, because of the money. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, wait. They refuse to leave Britain. For eh? now, the money is in Saudi Arabia. Wait, they are going there to fight. Wait, all of them. Thank so you very much. Don't you take wait, 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 thank you very much. I mean, this is what, what I'm trying to tell you. He decides that to help with his own country. He will go outside to fight, right? And to you, it's all right. You know, tomorrow you, you brag. And to Joshua is our son. If it's your son, if you excel it in his own country, mm. wow. Bash Ali is a Nigerian. So, Bash Ali is a Nigerian. I am not an American. Hmm? I am a Nigerian. Listen now, listen. My brother, I am a Nigerian. And Nigeria owes me the right to excel. Not America, not Saudi Arabia. This is where I must excel. You know, why is it that all the good people are leaving our country? Are you proud? Jackpa. Eh? Are you proud everybody's jackpa <laughs> <laughs> We have been begging the federal government to push to this great idea. Yes. 
Yes. If another country, another nation is yeah. begging you to come and fight, yeah. it may change the narrative. No, like no, Nigeria no. is going to start changing. Uh, uh, if you know my history, listen, uh, uh, you, re you remember when I fought uh, Rafu Tijani in Germany? You remember 1996? If, uh, uh, Okay, in 1996, in 1996, <laughs> okay. listen now, in 1996, listen, in 1996, I went to Germany, SN Germany, to fight the then champion, Rafa Zijani. You know, for every one point he hit me with, I hit him back with 10. If I was in no contest, go and watch it. You know, at the end, you know, they were throwing bottles, chairs, you know, into the ring, because I was robbed of the decision. You know why I was robbed? You know, because we fought in this country. You know, and they put up money and they protected their investment. Bashali is not their investment. Bashali can go to hell. They could have knocked me out in the first round. Everybody would have stood up and clapped, you know, and stuff like that. But Nigeria owes me. Saudi Arabia does not owe me anything. America does not owe me anything. Nigeria is my country and I must excel in Nigeria. Even when you are traveling, even when you are traveling. Sir, you're always in trouble.